Hey, my bug besties. Today's video is a little different. I'm doing a tutorial for the long-awaited ladybug backpack. If you don't follow me on Instagram or TikTok, you probably don't know about my series of bug sculptures. So I've been posting there a lot lately about the series of bug sculptures I'm making. And I get comments all the time being like, please make a pattern. Please, I want this to be backpack. Well, I did both. I made it a pillow and a backpack. So you can just make a pillow or you can make a backpack that can also be used as a pillow. See, these like clips unhook and it can be just a pillow. But this pattern is, I wanna say very heavy when it comes to sewing. There's a machine sewing aspect. You need to know how to hand sew. Is this for beginners? No, I wouldn't recommend it for beginners. If you don't know how to sew and you use a glue gun, I will be looking the other way. This is me. I'll be looking in the other direction if you do that. I would never recommend it, but I'm just saying, I will be looking the other way. Anyways, this is like such a fun backpack. I can fit my iPad in there. I have this 12.9 inch iPad Pro and it's pretty big and it fits in here and it's great. And I love this backpack, it's so fun. And I can also use it as a pillow. Okay, so I had a lot of people ask for me to use acrylic yarn let like hey please use a yarn that's like accessible to a lot of people and yes i listen to you we will be using a acrylic yarn for this tutorial and this is like a very cheap acrylic yarn that's very accessible to people it's like very standard medium weight I'll talk about it more in the video but i'm just saying that for the sewing pattern you can't make this without the sewing pattern. You need to print it off and tape it together, and I talk about that in the video, but you need to purchase that. And before I say anything else, I've made all of my tutorials free in the past, and my written patterns to be like an extra thing if you want to support me, but this took like so much time in figuring out, and developing a sewing pattern is something totally new to me. Even though I have a fashion degree, I've never like made a pattern for online use, you know what I mean? So, that being said, it is 18 USD and I know like a lot of people complain like that's really expensive for a pattern but for like the amount of work that goes into it and the amount of knowledge you gain just for 18 bucks you get like this whole sewing pattern all the instructions everything else so I just want to talk about that this can't this isn't a pattern where you can watch the video and just kind of figure it out for yourself you have to purchase it don't hate me for that I need to make a living anyways let's just get started with the tutorial before you do anything, make sure you print off the first page and then measure this little square and make sure it's two inches. You have to do that. If it's not two inches, it's not going to come out to the proper size. So once I've printed everything off, I'm just kind of laying it out in like the pattern that it needs to be. And it's like two pages, three pages, and then another two pages. And then I'm just cutting off like that little side border. And then I'm lining that up and I'm taping it together, which is like fairly easy. And, you know, I'm pretty proud of myself for pulling this off because it's pretty good, you know? Got to admit. I'm sorry if you hear my cat meowing in the background. Um, anyways, so here are all my pieces. I've got five pieces and that last piece I forgot to label. But don't worry, when you buy the pattern, it'll be labeled. I just messed up this one time. And so I'm going to start tracing things out. And I'm just using my water bottle to hold it down as I trace it out. And I'm tracing just directly around it, and then after, I will cut the seam allowance around it. So, as you can see, I flipped it over onto the wrong side, and I'm tracing it out on the wrong side. And you need to do that for the body and the head. So, this is the body, and that's what it looks like right now. And make sure it's wrong sides. Or, no, one right side, one wrong side, sorry. <laughs> and then I'm kind of, I'm just cutting around it, and I'm giving myself enough room to sew directly onto that white line. Yeah, I give myself about like half to a quarter inch seam allowance. And then as you can see, I've done like the exact same thing for the black head. And when it comes to the body, I trace it out like half of it and then right down the middle as you can see. And then I flip it over and then I trace around it again. You can either fold your fabric and trace it around it or do what I did. Either way, you need this like little bug body. And that's the, that's the tummy, I guess. And I'm going to repeat it a second time. And you have to do it a second time if you um, want to make a backpack. But if you just want to make a pillow, you can just make one. But if you want a backpack with a pocket, you need two. And this is how I cut out the legs in like the antenna tops. So as you can see, I folded my fabric in half. And this is an odd shape because it's a scrap, but we don't waste here. And I just folded it in half. And as you can see, I'm tracing my leg out onto the fabric. I don't know why I didn't speed that up. Oh, anyways. <laughs> um, and I'm just pinning it down. 
and I just like to put like three pins in the middle so it doesn't like move around anywhere and as you can see I'm just repeating it for the antenna end and just because these are really small pieces um, I think it's just easier to do it this way obviously you can cut them all out if you'd like but this is just my suggestion so I took it to the sewing machine and nothing's cut out I'm just going to sew around that leg leaving the opening and look at me go um, <laughs> I'm just following that line that I literally traced down and wow it gives you literally the most perfect leg I love doing this and it makes it so much easier than cutting everything out and then after that I cut like very close to the seam well not like very close but like fairly close um, to the seam and that just like allows me to make like the perfect leg and the perfect like antenna end and it makes it so much easier when you're doing six legs so I just literally repeated that six more times so I have six legs and you know I flip it inside out <laughs> always has to be a struggle doesn't it um <laughs> geez wow okay it's a long clip anyways um so there's my little leg how cute and then I'm repeating the same thing for the antenna end and obviously there's like a large opening for that one as well isn't it so cute so cute and then I just stuff the leg I find the best things to stuff legs with is like taping two colored pencils together or just pencils whatever or I guess you could do two chopsticks as well but I find taping two pencils creates like the absolute perfect tool like to stuff something and as you can see I haven't stuffed it full there's about an inch like empty with no stuffing and that is so we're able to sew it to the body without like having to go over a bunch of stuffing and I find the legs are still perfectly stuffed so now let's get to the zipper and you can look up like a zipper pocket tutorial if you just like YouTube search zipper pocket I'll also include that um, in the description of pattern and look how like nice that's uh, kind of sewn in but it's a lot easier than people think and as you can see I have the zipper like right side down and I just am sewing the top part down and I'm not using a zipper foot because I just couldn't find one but that's alright I just sewed the top part down and then as you can see I unzipped the zipper and I flipped it inside out so you can see look at that I just flip it like that and then I'm going to pin that side down and then sew it down as well. And, you know, I'm not really going for beauty, I'm going for functionality. And that's how I've always kind of sewn things. <laughs> and yeah, as you can see, I'm just unpinning it as I'm sewing it. And once I zip it up together, look how strange that is. You're like, what the heck? But it gives you like this, it, it works out great every time. And then I'm just cutting open the back. So there's an opening, and then, yeah. And then I'm going to top stitch around the zipper just to like keep it flush and then, you know, make it look nice. But I will link some like more comprehensive tutorials. I guess this is just like the footnote version of me doing it. And, you know, it's like a lot easier than people think like zippers used to scare me so much actually zippers do still scare me <laughs> and look how flat and flush that is like I didn't even measure anything I just like slapped it on there and started sewing and it's like super functional and isn't going anywhere the next thing we need to do is start sewing the body so as you can see I'm laying them right sides together so their nice sides are like sandwiched against each other and I'm just going to pin against that top edge and I know that one's the top edge because if I like sit it in front of me and put the pattern in front of me you know that's going to be the top edge and so as you can see did that and then I'm going to repeat that for the head so you can see the patterns in front of me and that is the top because the words are readable I guess is what I'm saying and I'm just pinning across the top edge and it's yeah that's the top edge because it's the top of that paper and you can't see any of the stitches because I did it in black. <laughs> and I have those two pieces and we're going to sew them together. So as you can see, I'm just opening it up. And then I'm going to put them right sides together. So the nice sides will go together and we're going to line up that like long flat edge. And I usually use like the center seam that we kind of made as a guide and I line both center seams up. 
and I just like like pin it as best as I can. I don't know why this clip is so long, um, but I'm sorry. <laughs> you know, I'm just like lining it up as best as I can and pinning it. You know, not everything comes out perfect, but you know, I'm, I like to think I'm doing a pretty decent job. And then I'm just gonna sew like right across that line. And obviously, don't sew your don't sew over your pins. Take the pins out. And yeah, you can see it's kind of taking a body shape. So I sewed along that. And look at that. That was only, you only sewed a couple pieces and you pretty much have like a lot of it done. The next thing is the straps. And so as you can see, I have four like little straps and then two long straps. And those little straps are four inches long. And then the two long straps are 18 inches. And as you can see, I'm unpacking my little swivel cl clip. And I bought four swivel clips. They each come with a D-ring. And then I'm putting those little straps around the D-ring like that. And I'm just sewing over like the very end of it so it like doesn't unravel and it's easier to work with. And those are all four of them. Woo. And then I'm taking my like swivel clip thing and I'm just folding it over the end and I'm sewing over that folded end so it just like doesn't go anywhere and it, you know, looks nice. And obviously you can make your straps like a different length, but so yeah, and that's how they attach. But you want a clip on the end of both of the long ones. So now it's time to sew together the body, which is, you know, okay. And here I am just pinning the legs onto the body and I pin the legs about two inches away from each other and I like don't have exact measurements because it's honestly it's a lot of eyeballing. But the top leg goes onto the black area and then two of the other legs go onto the red area. And then when I put the clips on, I'm measuring it four inches away from the center seam. Because you can see four inches away. And I'm using tape because like my pins aren't strong enough to go through that. And the reason I am pinning all of these pieces down is because I'm going to sew over the ends of all of those pieces before I sew the tummy piece on. And like this is optional, by, but I find it a lot easier if you sew like all of the clips down and then all of the legs down. So you really don't have to worry about um, them going anywhere when you sew the tummy piece on. And so as you can see, I'm at the tummy piece and I just lined up my two pieces with each other and then tucked in all of my legs and I just pinned everything together. And you know, it's a lot. It seems like a lot, but surprisingly, my sewing machine went through it without snapping any threads or needles. I'm very surprised, to be honest. So I went over it a couple times just to make sure it was secure. And make sure you leave the zippers open, just a tiny gap so you can flip it inside out. And then once it's inside out, I am stuffing it a ton. And so the two zippers allow me to like have one of the sections as a compartment and then the other section is just like stuffing. So you're able to like unstuff it and fit more things into it or, you know, just stuff it even more. Yeah, totally up to you. You know, you have that freedom. But I like to stuff mine pretty firm, especially when I'm like adding the crochet part because... I don't like, you know, I don't, I don't want to mess with that. I just want it to be super like firm as much as I can so I'm able to sew things on accurately. But you can always like take stuffing out, which is a great option. And so as you can see, it's pretty plush and it's nice to have like that separate zipper and it fits my whole iPad, which was like, you know, that was actually pretty good. But look how great it looks. It's so awesome. And those are the, those are the straps on. Now we're on to like the dealy bobbers, the little antenna, and I'm measuring out a piece that is 18 inches long and then I'm just like cutting it with a wire cutter. And I'm just like, I just fold the piece. I fold the piece and in the center it's about three inches, but you can make yours farther if you want. And I kind of make a bend right there, but then I'm wrapping tape hockey tape around it you can use like any tape you want I just have an abundance of hockey tape so I will like continue to use that but you can use electrical tape or whatever tape I just want to make sure that like the wire doesn't slip or slide around inside the fabric and like this just makes sure and I haven't had I've used this a lot and I haven't had any issues with this like being a thing so that's why I choose to use like tape and you can also like I tape over the ends so they don't poke it they don't poke anything which is also great But as you can see, there's my little wire, and then I cut like a really long strip that is about like a quarter of an inch, and I just put like a big glob of hot glue right down the center, and I'm going to glue it to that wire. It's like a little shorter than the length of the wire, and I just like 
make sure it dries before I start sewing it. And so as you can see, I'm just like sewing them together and you don't have to accurately cut it out. You can always like go back and trim it. But then I cut two holes in the front of the bug and they're again, they're about three to f like three inches apart pretty much. And I insert my wire through there and it's like very loosey goosey when I first do it, but I essentially just sew around the edges of like the the bug the hole I created and the wire and it honestly like makes a really great like it, it, it looks really flush it always looks really good but I go around a couple times as you can see like look that's pretty good and I went around a couple times making sure that it's all like together and you can't see any gaps and then you can just bend the wire wherever now I'm adding the antenna ends which are those little things you made earlier, and I'm just sewing it directly to the piece of fabric that is wrapped around the wire. And obviously, it's much larger than like the piece of wire, so I like I sew around it like a couple times. And each time, I'm just like grabbing pieces and then sewing it to the antenna as much as I can and making it as flush as I can. This is the type of yarn I'm using. So it is the Craftsmart Value yarn. I have had a lot of requests to use a cheap acrylic yarn to make my patterns more accessible. I've listened to your request and now I will be using some acrylic yarns so it's easier for you to replicate it. It says it's like a medium, which I would say is pretty accurate. Um, and use a 5.5 millimeter, but we're not doing that. Um, I have it in red, white, and also black and those are all the colors you'll need my gauge swatch is two double crochets per inch and my stitches are very thick and we are going to double up the yarn so for every single piece you're going to make you're going to double up the yarn so it makes it like extra squishy so before i forget i'm using a 6.5 millimeter crochet hook and it is like kind of tight for what i'm doing but i want my yarn to be like very close together and very plush and that is the reason why now as i mentioned before we will double it up and this just like allows us to get a you know a much thicker piece in not having to like buy thick yarn so the first piece we're going to make is the back and i'm just going to do a slip knot and then i'm going to foundation double crochet 26 and if you don't know how to foundation double crochet i can show you briefly so i'm going to chain three but I would recommend looking at a tutorial because this is kind of different. If you don't like foundation, like kind of stitches, then just chain 29 and then double, cro double crochet 26, starting in the fourth stitch from the hook. But anyways, so I'm going to do the foundation double crochet and I change three and then I'm going to yarn over, insert my hook in the first chain, yarn over, pull through, yarn over, pull through one. And then yarn over, pull through two, yarn over, pull through two. And that creates like our, our first post. You know what I mean? And then yarn over again, insert into that top kind of like stitch we just make. Yarn over, pull through one, yarn over, pull through run, yarn over, pull through two, pull through two. And I'm going really fast because like there's so many better tutorials you can look up to do this. So we're going to do 26 of that. So I've done 26 foundation double crochet stitches and you may think like, oh, why do I count it as 27? That's because like the very first one isn't really counted as one, but I like to count it as one because it's a chain three, so that's practically a stitch. So that's why the stitch count is 27, but you only do a foundation double crochet of 26. Anyways, moving on to the next rows. Rows two to seven will be just regular double crochet rows. And here I am, I'm gonna chain three, and when I place my next double crochet, I'm not gonna place it in that stitch right there. I'm gonna place it in the next one because I'm going to count that chain three as a double crochet stitch. And I know a lot of people don't like that, and sometimes I don't like that, but for this project, that's what we're gonna do. So for this pattern, if I say there's 27 stitches in the pattern, there's actually only 26 stitches, but I count the chain three as another stitch. So just wanna preface that before anyone gets confused. Okay, so right now I have seven rows and looking pretty good. Look how nice that is. And for row eight, we're going to chain three. Ooh. And then double crochet 21 stitches. Then we're gonna do two decreases. That's one. Two. 
two, and then double crochet into that very last stitch. We're gonna flip it over. And for row nine, we're gonna chain three. And then we're gonna do three decreases. So that is one. Two. Three. Then we're gonna do double crochet decrease. And we're gonna do that double crochet decrease three times. So one, two, three. Decrease one, two, three, decrease then double crochet three. All right, row 10, we're gonna turn that around, we're gonna chain three. We're gonna double crochet four, and then decrease. So one, two, three, four. Decrease. Oop. One, two, three, four, decrease, and then we're going to double crochet one. We're gonna do two decreases. So that's one. That's two. And then double crochet one in that last stitch. We're gonna flip it over and then for row 11, we're gonna chain three. So one, two, three. And then we're gonna do two decreases. And then we're gonna double crochet 10. And then we're finished one half of it. So I'm just gonna tie off and weave in your ends. I'll do that later. But to do the other half, we're gonna repeat the exact same thing. But here's the trick. See this first foundation double crochet row that I called row one? We're going to repeat everything we did on this side, except we're gonna start at row two. 
So we're going to count row 1 as our row 1, if that makes sense. So I'm going to join at the very end at this last stitch. And I'm going to chain three. One, two, three. And that is where I'm going to start the second half, starting from row two. So as you remember, row two to seven was just double crocheting 27 stitches. So we're going to start at row two right here and then continue what the exact same thing we just did. All right, so this is the finished piece as you can see it's just like a mirrored piece and I'm gonna weave all of my ends in so it's easier but you know that's that's pretty much it it's pretty easy fairly simple pattern so the next piece is the black head and this piece is like kind of complicated by complicated there's a lot of like different instructions so follow me the best you can and for this one, we're going to, here's a slip knot, and then we're going to foundation double crochet 17. And like I mentioned before, that makes 18 stitches because I jam one in the very last stitch. Or if you want to, you can chain 20 and then double crochet 17 stitches to give you 18, but it's totally up to you. Once we have our foundation double crochet 17 stitches, which is actually 18 stitches, like I mentioned before, we're going to chain three. And that counts as our first stitch. And then we're going to double crochet in that stitch. I know before I said don't do it, but now we're doing an increase. So by double crocheting in that stitch and having the chain three, that is our very first increase. Makes sense. And then the next stitch we're going to Increase again, so increase, increase. So we've got two increases, and then we're going to double crochet 14. So, right. so after you double crochet your 14, you're going to want to increase in the last two stitches. So, and you might think, oh, that's not really a stitch. No, it is a stitch. <laughs> And then for row three, we're going to chain three, and then double crochet into that stitch, so that counts as our first increase. Um, and then we're gonna double crochet 18. Then in the last two stitches, I'm going to do two increases. So increase, and then increase. For row four, I'm going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And in the fourth stitch from the hook, which is this one, we're going to place our first double crochet. And then we're going to do three more. So four in total. So one, the next one, we're going to do another one, the next chain, another one. And next chain, another double crochet. And then we're going to put an increase in that first stitch back into like our normal row. So once I have that increase, I'm going to double crochet 24 into the other side. So we're going to place an increase in that very last stitch. So put an increase right there. And then we're going to kind of flip it upside down and we're going to work like this. So now that it's flipped upside down, I'm going to chain seven. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven. And then I'm going to place my double crochet in the fourth chain from the hook, kind of like right here. And then I'm going to double crochet four. So one, two, three, four. 
I'm going to place a slip knot right here. Or slip stitch, sorry, a slip stitch right here. And then tie that off. And are you serious? Why are people so loud? All right, so this we finished like the top part and I'm like, I know the way I think is kind of confusing, but it works for me. Remember, this is row one, our first row. We are going to slip stitch into the end of that row one. And then we're going to chain three. And that will count as our very first stitch. And then we're going to double crochet 17 right across. So no increases. So in the next row, we're going to chain three. And then we're going to double crochet into that stitch and that will count as our first increase. In the next stitch, we're going to put another increase. And then we are going to double crochet 14 across. After that, I'm going to put two increases in the last two stitches. So increase, increase, then oop, increase, increase. Starting row four, we're going to chain three. We're going to double crochet in that same stitch. And that'll be our first increase. Increase in the next stitch. And then we're going to double crochet 18. Then in the last two stitches, we're going to increase. So increase in the next stitch and then increase in the last stitch. Row five, here we go. Row five, we're going to chain three. Then we're going to double crochet four and then decrease. And then we're gonna repeat that four times. So one, two, three, four, decrease. And then we're gonna do that four times total. And in the very last stitch, we're going to just do one double crochet. How did this happen? Okay. Row six, we're going to chain three. And then we're going to double crochet three and then decrease. Then we're going to repeat that three more times, so four times total. Then in the very last stitch, I'm just going to place one double crochet. Row seven, let's flip it around. We're going to chain three. Then we're going to double crochet two and then decrease. So one, two, decrease. And I'm going to repeat that three more times. So that's a total of four. So double crochet two, decrease. In that last stitch, we're just going to add one double crochet. It's getting pretty repetitive, I know. But we're almost done. So for row eight, we're going to chain three. And then we're going to double crochet one and then decrease then we're going to repeat that three more times for a total of four times then for our very last stitch we're going to place one double crochet and then we're on our last row row nine and we're going to chain three Whoop. then we're going to decrease three times so one whoop. 
Actually, I lied. We're going to decrease four times. <laughs> One, two, three. Four. And then we're going to place one double crochet into that very last stitch. And we're all done this part. You can cut the end off and weave in your ends, whatever you like. And this is kind of the snout, and then this is where the circles will be. It'll make more sense once we start assembling it. So the black spots, these ones are actually my favorite because they you can make them really fast. So we're going to do a slip knot. Then we're going to chain six. One, two, three, four, five, six. <laughs> On the fourth chain from the hook, so three, four, there we go. We're going to place one double crochet. Then in the next chain, we're going to place another double crochet. And then in the very last chain, we're going to place six double crochets. So one, two, three, four, five, six, and as you can see that kind of like loops us around and then we're going to start crocheting up this side of the chain. If you can kind of see, it's a little difficult. So we're going to place our next stitch in that piece of chain here. That kind of is like adjacent to this stitch. And then, sorry, my ends are in the way. And then where I put that very first stitch, I'm going to put five double crochets there. So one, two, three, four, Five, and then I'm going to slip stitch in the top of the first stitch. Ignore the chain, we're going for that first stitch. That kind of makes it more seamless. And that is how we get our little dot. And depending on what ladybug you want, you can do as many dots as you want. So for the two spot ladybug, obviously I only did two spots, but I want to do the seven spot ladybug this time. So I made seven, here we go. The next thing we'll make is the long black stripe that goes along the back of the bug. So first we're going to do a slip knot, and then we're going to foundation half double crochet 28. If you don't want to do foundation half double crochet 28, just like chain 30 and then do a bunch of half double crochets. But I'm going to do a foundation half double crochet, so to do that I chain 2, yarn over, I insert my hook into the first stitch, and I think I've like shown this so many times that maybe if you watch my tutorials you'll know maybe i don't know anyway so i insert my hook into the first stitch yarn over pull through the first stitch yarn over pull through that first loop yarn over pull through all three that is our first one so yarn over insert into that first like stitch top that we made yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through one yarn over pull through all three now if you're confused and you want to learn just look up on YouTube how to foundation half double crochet and you'll be all good. Anyways, I need to do 28 of these and that's it. So here is that little piece we made and you can just weave in your ends. To make the white face circles, we're going to start with a slip knot and then we're going to, I do chain three and then slip stitch into that first stitch, but you can do a magic circle, whatever you like, it doesn't matter. Then after that, we're going to chain three and then we're going to double crochet 12 into that little circle we made. After that, we're going to slip stitch into the very top of that first stitch. Ignore the um, chain three, we're gonna do the first stitch. And then we're going to chain three, and then we're gonna do a bunch of increases. We're gonna increase in every single stitch, but we wanna start in that stitch we just slip stitched into. So add an increase there, and then we're going to add an increase into every stitch around the circle. Then I'm going to slip stitch into the top of that first double crochet. And from here, just snip your thread and weave in your ends. But you want to make two of them. So repeat it one more time so you have two circles. Now the very last piece we're making are the little white face dots. So start with a slip knot and then we're going to chain four. 
and then we're going to double crochet three into that very first chain we made. And then that is literally it. Um, probably the easiest thing ever. <laughs> And you can just weave in your ends, but sometimes I find it difficult with a small piece, so you can just like tuck it in when you sew it on. But you want to repeat that one more time so you end up with two of them. So time for all the hand sewing. I have all of my pieces. And the first thing I always start with is like the back, the bum. And as you can see, like as I like stretch it over the base, it like cre it fits like very well. And obviously you, it takes some finagling and moving around, but eventually it will sit flush. It won't be perfect at first. You just have to kind of stretch it over and add a couple pins just to make sure um, you know you're sewing it on accurately. And I just sew around the edge, but I don't like go on to the black part and I'll show you a clip right now. I'm See how I'm just sewing it, the red part to the red part? I'm not sewing it to the black part, even on the sides. You can see there's a tiny bit of gap. It's hard to see because like, pretty good color match right but yeah you can see it better there there's a bit of a gap and I repeat the same for the black head as you can see I'm just pinning it on and yeah I'm kind of guessing where the eyeballs are and then when I first start sewing the black part to the body as you can see I'm sewing it just directly to the red crochet I'm not sewing it into the fleece I'm just sewing it to the red crochet part until I get to like the fleece part and I turn this corner and then I'm actually sewing it to the fleece. But when crochet is touching crochet, I always sew it to the crochet. But if there's no, it's not touching any crochet, then I sew it directly to the fleece. And I repeat the same for the little face circles. And I'm just sewing it directly to the crochet. I'm not sewing it, like, I'm not digging my needle into through the crochet, through the fleece, and then back through the crochet and fleece. Like, that's, that's too much. I just sew it directly to um, the crochet. And it, like... It's great. It's it's very flush. And next I'm moving on to the little like face dots. And again, just sewing it to the crochet. It's, you know, trying to I just kind of guess where things should be and I like position it to where I think it looks good. Now I'm sewing on the stripe. And as you can see, I start the stripe at the bottom and again with this one too. I'm sewing it directly to the crochet. I'm not sewing it to the fleece. That's way too deep. But I add this dot because it's a seven spot ladybird, so, you know, there's a seventh dot, and I add it to right there, and then I go back to sewing the middle. And here I am sewing on all the dots, and, you know, I have no guide on where they go. You gotta just, like, position them and, you know, think whatever looks best. And you can put as many dots or as little dots, you could have no dots if you want, but this is the finished bug. I am, like, so happy with how it turns out. I say that for everything. <laughs> But honestly, like, it's a really fun backpack. It is a really fun project. It's, like, large enough where it feels substantial. But at the same time, you know, if I can unclip it and then also use it as a backpack, there's, like, many options for this. And as you can see, I also have a pillow version. You watched it all. Thank you. Thank you for making it through. If you actually, like, made this, please, like, email me a photo or tag me on Instagram or something I would like absolutely love to see if you make another bug other than a ladybug and like substitute different stripes and stuff show me please I would love to see anyways thank you so so much for watching thank you for supporting me I really appreciate it and I really love doing things like this um I think that's all I have to say I'll see you guys in the next video goodbye